Today is Wednesday, the 27th of March, and welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Apostle Paul demands that all communicants proclaim the Lord's death at their use of the supper. Although they celebrate it above all for their own sake, they also celebrate it for the sake of their neighbor and the world thereby preaching and extolling to them all the atoning death of the Lord. The altar on which the Holy Supper is celebrated should also be the pulpit of the laity, where they, as true spiritual priests, proclaim the virtues of him who called them from darkness into his wonderful light. The preacher proclaims the crucified Christ in his sermon from the pulpit, and when that sermon has ended, the believing congregation gathers at the altar to proclaim him as well. By this, they demonstrate that they are part of the church of Christ. If Christ had instituted only the office of preaching and not the holy sacraments as well, no one would know where the church or the congregation of believers is to be found. Many who do not want to be Christians, to whom the crucified Christ is foolishness, also hear the sermon. By their celebration of the supper, those who have come to faith in Christ and have been baptized appear at the altar of the Lord to testify that they are still mindful of their covenant and that they remain his faithful disciples. But our text also makes another demand. St. Paul declares that our use of the Holy Supper is a common confession of faith. Therefore, we should celebrate only with those who confess the same faith with us. If the supper had been instituted for the sole purpose of eating the true body of Christ and drinking his blood, we could then celebrate it wherever it is rightly carried out according to Christ's command. But Paul says that by this act, we proclaim the Lord's death. That is, we confess the faith. Thus, it would be against Christ's will for us to celebrate the supper where our confession of faith is contradicted. Wherever it is celebrated, the Holy Supper is the congregation's banner of faith. Just as a person enlists on one side of the army whose flag he supports, so also each Christian places himself on the side of the congregation in whose midst he eats the supper. If that congregation confesses the true faith, the communicant, by his appearance at the altar, confesses the same faith with it. But if the congregation confesses a false faith, the communicant, by his participation in its celebration of the Lord's Supper, also confesses the false faith and thus denies the true faith. Therefore, whenever we approach the altar, let us appear before the world as confessors of the crucified Christ and as true spiritual priests of him who called us from darkness to his wonderful light. Let us not gather around this banner of faith in the false church, but rather assemble where the true Christ and his whole pure and genuine gospel is confessed and preached. And so we pray. O oh Jesus, blessed Lord, to thee, my heartfelt thanks forever be, who has so lovingly bestowed on me thy body and thy blood. Break forth my soul for joy and say, what wealth is come to me this day. My Savior dwells within my heart. How blessed am I, how good thou art. Amen. And we pray. 
Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we also pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.